have a little lesson on this Moderato by Metz, um, a short little exciting piece. And this piece comes from, or this edition comes from my grade two repertoire lessons book, um, follow up, following up the grade one book. So in my lesson books, um, repertoire lesson books, you have a couple of pages of lessons on a piece just to kind of prepare you for the piece and prep you for the experience of playing the piece. So um, yeah, watch these video lessons for free. Um, you might have this piece in other books, but pick up the book um, to follow along with all the um, notation and fingerings. But of course you can learn lots just from watching the videos for free and also how to apply this, um, the lessons to other pieces you're playing as well. So the bar one, that's the original bar. And I'm using a repeating, um, M and A fingering for the repeated notes. One thing you want to do um, sometimes is just break your pieces into open strings, playing the right hand alone. Pianists do this all the time, one hand at a time. You can do it on guitar as well. So here's bar one on open strings. It sounds weird, but the thing is, it gives you an opportunity to just focus on the right hand and to get really good at just the right hand. You could also take the opening arpeggio from that piece and play it on open strings as well. Just making sure your arpeggios feel really good in your right hand. It's a great thing to do. Your left hand isn't doing much. So you can really just focus on, on working on your right hand. You could also work on those repeated MA fingers. If you're a student who hasn't been practicing their MA fingering on their scales, uh, this is a great opportunity to just take an open string. And just walk through um, the technique. A harder example to break down would be bar four. Here's the original bar four. We'll do that slower. If you broke that down to open strings, the only th tricky thing is you, you, you can't play anything on the slur. Here it is on open strings. always find that when I break things to open strings, break, break it down into open strings, I find a weakness in my right hand technique sometimes. It feels fragile or not secure enough. I'm, I'm like, it's not as precise as I want it to be. So that's great. Whenever I can find a weakness in my playing, I want to practice that and work on that weakness to resolve it and to make sure I'm comfortable with the technique. Another thing to practice in this piece might be memorizing the shifts and practicing the shifts from upper positions to lower positions. So this, um, this line from bar 15 and 16 uh, would be a great opportunity for that. So it's a great idea to just make sure you have it kind of memorized. And then to practice the shift itself. I always like to make up funny little like rhythmic tricks to practice these kinds of shifts. You know, just something fun to like work on the technique. You don't have to like play the technique exactly like the piece. Um, ooh, <laughs> I made a mistake. So um, you can work on that shift in isolation, making sure that you're really secure, that your arm knows to like go from here, exactly to ninth position, third position, ninth, 
third. No like readjusting, you know, like when you get down there, just from one place to the next place. You visualize it and your arm just moves your hand into place. Your thumb stays in a good position and it just moves it to the right place. It's great. Um, so making sure that you um, really focus on that kind of aspect of the piece. Anything difficult, you can turn into right hand open string exercises. Shifts you can practice in isolation. A couple of last words about this piece because it, it's an opportunity to play a little bit faster and impress your audience or yourself. Just be conscious that striving for speed, um, speed is just a byproduct of healthy playing. It's not a goal into itself. So musicality should be your ultimate goal. And musicality is the ultimate virtu like virtuosity. Lots of players can play fast. Um, that doesn't impress me at all. Um, what impresses me is when I listen to music and it just sounds beautifully done. It's like the phrasing is good, it's, the legato is good, the dynamics good, it's like, it's exciting, the articulations are nice, the musical ideas are high quality. That's the stuff that makes it good. If it's fast, fine, great. Um, exciting, cool. But if it's not fast, I can still really enjoy it. So make sure that you're focused on the musicality. The other thing I'll say is speed is just a combination of economy of motion, accuracy, and relaxation. Economy of motion is the act of eliminating unneeded movements. So keeping your movements small, right? When you shift, going right to the place where you need to shift. No readjustments, no inching your way up or anything like that. It's just really clean, efficient uh, movements. Um, accuracy is kind of self-explanatory, but you shouldn't overlook it. It's like keeping your fingers close to the frets, which stops it from buzzing and all sorts of things. Um, it's also like enables you to um, push less hard and things like that. And then relaxation. Being able to do all these things in a relaxed way so that you can access the natural reflex-oriented motions of ergonomic guitar technique and just your normal reflexes of your hands, right? So economy of motion, accuracy, and relaxation will result in speed. So focus on those things and speed will come. Let's just walk through the piece. Um, I threw the pages on the floor here, but let's just walk through the piece and I'll just mention any last comments. I'll go a little bit slower. A little bit of phrasing there, like just a little bit of a crescendo. That's kind of a quick shift to second position. I don't even mark the position there because it's not necessary, but just make sure that your hand is like clear about what position it's in. Here, I, I decided to use my thumb on the B just to keep the thumb on the lower voice the whole time. And I use the, the I finger just because it's, it's right there. Um, then it continues. There's not much you can do here, you just have to jump the three back. spot if you have trouble with that spot. Practice it on open strings. Until you feel like your right hand is pretty confident because the left hand is fairly easy. It's just a C chord. Here, make sure you alternate right hand fingers. I am are accent marks so you, just, you can push a little bit extra on those notes But just, like I said, practice those shifts and I think it will come fairly easily. Um, that ninth position, do 
Don't forget to close the C on the third string here. Then down to first position. I hope you've enjoyed all the pieces from the book, and uh, I will be coming out with a grade three book, uh, not anytime soon, but um, hopefully within the, the next uh, six months or so, I'll have the grade three book up. But um, nevertheless, um, you have method book number one, method book number two, repertoire lessons grade one, repertoire lessons grade two, and then if you need more material, you can always take a look at my easy classical guitar pieces. It's a collection of pieces from the grade one to grade three level which um, will give you repertoire right, right around your level and one or two challenges as well.